Vice President Kamala Harris, now the presumptive Democratic potential presidential nominee, saying she's ready to debate Donald Trump this September. But I'm ready, and I think the voters deserve to see the split screen that exists in this race on a debate stage, and so I'm ready. Let's go. So Donald Trump's campaign just putting out a statement within the last few minutes saying that they are not going to agree to a debate until Harris is officially named as nominee because they've already changed the nominee once and they're suspicious of why Barack Obama hasn't endorsed Harris yet. So until there's an official nominee, they're not agreeing to any debates. Meanwhile, all this is Harris is releasing her first campaign ad targeting the former president. There are some people who think we should be a country of chaos, of fear, of hate. But us, we choose something different. We choose freedom. Her first campaign ad out. Attention now turns to Harris's first big decision as presumptive nominee, who she will choose as her running mate. Seema Mehta, veteran political reporter at the LA Times. She has covered presidential campaigns in back 2008. She joins us live now with more. All right, so let's go through the big names that are being discussed, and you can introduce them to folks and give us the pros and cons. Let's start with the governor of the biggest, most important swing state of all, Pennsylvania, Governor Josh Shapiro. Right. Josh Shapiro, I mean, I think he's really well regarded in the Democratic Party, um, and he is, is viewed as a skilled order. And Pennsylvania is so important for you know for Democrats having any chance of winning the White House in November. Um, there is some concern that uh, I mean, he's only been the chief executive of the state for less than two years, and then in addition, he's Jewish, and there's concerns about um, with the the conflict between Israel and Hamas, how that will play with certain voters in Michigan in particular, but also like progressive voters across the country. And it's like, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that we're having this conversation in 2024, but we are. Yeah, and it's worth noting that she is married to Doug Emhoff, right. who is Jewish as well. Okay, and so, attorney. right, uh, Governor, uh, what about an astronaut, Arizona Senator Mark <laughs> Kelly? I mean, Mark Kelly is a really interesting guy. I mean, Arizona used to be sort of purple. It's gotten a little bit more red lately. And, you know, the, the calculus, like, you know, candidates use to pick their running mates, it's usually like, can you, like, cover up some weaknesses in my re resume? Like, you know, Barack Obama chose Joe Biden because Joe Biden had a lot of foreign policy experience. But right now, we're in a different stage, a different campaign, a, an unprecedented campaign, and it, unlike anything we've seen before. So Mark Kelly is viewed as, you know, just he's charismatic. Um, he has won in Arizona, and he has appealed to moderate voters. Um, and he's, you know, he's married to Gabby Giffords, who um, survived uh, an assassination attempt in 2011, but was gravely injured. Um, and so and he also, you know, he appeals in the Southwest, Nevada, in Arizona. So he's also apparently at the top of the list. Yeah, and he's an astronaut who spent as much time in space than anybody in human history. <laughs> who's got also was a military pilot before that as well. So his his resume is really something like you would come out of a movie. Uh, meanwhile, there's North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper, who looks like the governor of North Carolina. <laughs> And I mean, you know, North Carolina, it's really unlikely for it to be in play this year because of the way things have been going. But Kamala, you know, the uh, vice president knows Cooper from their days. They were both AGs together um, years ago. And so she has a comfort level with him, which that's another thing, you know. Uh, you know, presidential candidates look for people that they have a relationship with who, you know, that is really, they feel like can truly be their sounding board. And that relationship, I think, is important. That's said, North Carolina, unlike Pennsylvania, probably unlike Arizona, North Carolina, I mean, if, if Democrats got to the point where North Carolina is in play, it's like a totally different world than what we're talking about today. Okay, the other possibilities are uh, Kentucky Governor uh, Andy Bashir. We also have Pete Buttigieg, Secretary of Transportation, and Minnesota, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. You make a strong case for Andy Bashir. You know, I don't, but um, other people do. And then Andy Bashir, I mean, he's you know he's from Kentucky. He. Uh, he has really spoken out about strongly about J.D. Vance and the way that he portrayed Appalachia in his best-selling book, Hillbilly Elegy, which was how he launched his political career. So he has been like an attack dog on that front. Um, Pete Buttigieg, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, concern among Democrats. Some, a lot, the conventional wisdom is that Kamala Harris, as a woman of color in a country that has never elected a woman, nor has it elected a woman of color, that she's really likely to pick a straight white male as her running mate. Um, and so with Pete Buttigieg, I think that some Democrats fear that, you know, picking a, an openly gay man could, you know, could harm her prospects. But there's another faction in the Democratic Party that's like, 
don't listen to the conventional wisdom. We're in a new era. You know, pick a woman, pick a person of color, pick somebody who represents a huge portion of America that has not you know, typically been represented at those levels. So, I mean, she has an interesting, it's going to be really interesting to see who she chooses. And the question is, the people that would think that way in terms of I'm not going to vote for uh, an openly gay man, but I am going to vote for the black woman, probably aren't voting for the black woman to begin with. <laughs> the, the, the calculus in 2008 when uh, when Barack Obama chose Joe Biden was that the idea of having an older man, an older white man yeah. who had been in federal office for decades and who had that foreign policy experience, that that really helps him in, with some of these voters who might otherwise have questions. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't think, you know, I mean, it, the elections have gotten so crazy, it'll be interesting to see who she picks, but I mean, I think that this is like, it's not checkers, it's chess. Yeah, and we're going to have a pick before August 7th because there's going to be a virtual roll call. So this pick is coming in the next few weeks. Seema Mehta, thank you so much.